Okay, so this is installing a Sync 3 upgrade kit from 4dtech.com in my 2014 Ford Escape Titanium. The first step in this is to get into the center stack here where the screen and the, the APIM live. Um, on the Escape, this starts with getting this top um, piece of trim off. Um, it's held on with like 10 or 12 um, individual clips. I've seen a lot of videos online of people who just hit this and, and be very violent about it. You can do get away without doing that. You just grip on it and you sort of push up until all the clips start releasing. And once you do that, sometimes the grill unpops there, there's a connector here that actually lights up your CD slot and there's a little, just unplug, squeeze and unplug that. It pulls towards you, thankfully. And then you get the last couple of clips. And you can take that and put that aside. Then there are two seven millimeter screws in here. Um, let me to show you. Two seven millimeter screws right there and right there that you'll have to remove in order to get the to get this part the front this whole front part out so we're going to remove those just keep these in your cup holder so you don't drop them And then this is only held on furthermore with just two clips that are right about here. So you can just grab onto this front plastic part and kind of see There we go. Um, I could, apparently sometimes these vents pop out and I will have to figure out how to pop that back in later. One thing when you unplug, because there's a wiring harness in here you have to unplug. Um, there's this little captive uh, pin in there that you'll have to wiggle free. Um, I think if you want one of those um, V-shaped uh, trim tools, you can pry it loose that way. I, of course, forgot mine in the house. And then just squeeze the clip and unplug that. Okay, so now we're into where the screen itself lives, and the APIM is behind it. You've got four more seven millimeter screws right here. They're identical to the other ones, so you can mix them up if you like. Do hang on to these because if you drop them, they will fall down into the center stack, and goodness knows where they'll go. Okay, so then you just take the screen and with the APM attached to it and just pull it out here. The escape seems to have a lot of cable here. So there's two connectors you have to unplug. Uh, this one is your USB. It ties to your USB ports in your center console. You push down on the little uh, clip here and that'll just work its way out. This one is a little funky. Um, this there's there's actually like a handle here that will eject this uh, connector from the back of the uh, unit. So you just push down here and get the handle released. And when you pull this down, it ejects the connector. So that is your My Four Touch screen with the the screen is on the front, the APIM's on the back. That's the brains of the whole sync system. So then. We go into the kit that we got, the part of the kit we got from 
4D Tech and very similar. A um, couple different connectors, but uh, this two, these two are, are the same. We'll also need to add the GPS antenna that they include um, and install up, up, by, um, up in the dash so that uh, you can get GPS signal on here. Um, what we need to do is remove these two brackets that are on both sides because um, the, uh, the unit, uh, as they ship it, does not come with those. So it turns out that the screws that hold the brackets onto the screen are actually uh, Torx T8, um, not Phillips as I would originally thought. These are actually just screws that are in the, the screen itself. Um, but you'll have to remove these, little, these wide black screws. Don't know how long these are, so I don't want to drop them. Bracket just comes off. So it sounds like we're just breaking the stiction on the uh, screws there. Nothing. One of those things that sounds a little worse than it is. A pin and screen. And here is our new one. And it looks like it ships with the screws already in it. So we'll use the new screws. So when you're putting the brackets onto the new screen, you want to make sure that the uh, Phillips screws um, show up in the two little holes on the side. Make sure you, you got the right bracket on the right side. Um, and the two little dimples show through the little holes. And just use your T8 and drive those guys home. And we'll do the same thing for the other bracket, which as you see sits exactly where it should. There's the screws. There's the screw holes, and there's the dimples. Just make sure I'm grabbing the right screw. Okay, so the other thing you'll need to do before you put this in is find a location for the GPS antenna, which is it's also included with the kit. Um, and it will plug into the blue the connect the free connector on the back here with a little blue ring on it um, to make sure that your uh, unit gets GPS reception. What I think I'm going to do is see if you, you want to have this as far forward as you can, as you generally can. Um, just seeing if the magnet works. Um, and uh, you want to have it. You don't. You won't. You don't want to have it underneath anything metal. Like you don't want to have it back inside the car. Um, thankfully, the windshield is raked far enough. Um, that if you, as long as it's reasonably far forward, you should be okay. I 
I do include a little bit of 3M uh, glue pad and a um, cleaning pad so that you can stick the antenna wherever you need it. I'm going to try for slide this in. Um, I'm going to try and go near the speaker because I think that should still clear once the uh, once the trim is still snapped back on. All right, so I ran the GPS antenna from here, kind of looped around here, tucked it underneath this bracket, and then down under, underneath here into this compartment. And I still have an awful, awful lot of GPS antenna that I'm just going to tie up with some cable, with some twist ties. So I just twist tied off the GPS cable, um, the extra, and I'm going to tuck it under this little part here. I still have a little extra, but that's okay. So I've got my GPS connector here. Okay, it's now time for the moment of truth. We take our new module, and then this cable doesn't go out very far, but we get a little bit. So we just plug that back in, and then swing the arm, and it clicks back in. We take our USB and plug that back into the black connector. The gray, the gray USB connector is actually unused. And then our GPS cable plugs into that connector. And this will set back on the posts, ready to be screwed back in. One habit that I've developed, not just with car stuff, is to do the um, screws on something like this in a crossover pattern. Um, make sure stuff gets seated right. So now our dash work is done and we can put the dash back together. Need to figure out how these go back in. It looks like these just kind of clip in there. These little T-clips go down over these. good. So we'll take the harness for the stuff here and plug it back in and just push the pin back in. That'll go in a lot easier than it came out. And then just snap that back down. That all works. And then put our two seven millimeters here back in.
then take our dash top piece, just line that up there. The goofy one to do is actually this little um, fish hook shaped thing right there. Let's just get that lined up. Just sort of pop it down. Um, grab this cable out of here. Don't let that fall down a little bit. And then, yeah, you have to get this down a little bit to get it to plug in. And just slap it down. So the last step we have is to replace the media hub from my Four touch with the Sync 3 one, which will give you your CarPlay. Um, first thing to do is to get this face plate off. Um, you should be able to eject your SD card if you have one. Um, I just get my finger under here and it'll pop off. And then um, I've seen recommendations to use like picks to get this out, but frankly, I can get um, my fingers in here and just slide that out. There's two cables, the USB and the power. Um, the USB unplugs just like the one from the back of the, um, the head unit. And the power just has a little tab and you pull that out. Put that aside. There is a adapter bracket in the kit that fits because the new USB hub is smaller than the, the old one. So that will eventually snap in there, but this is actually where we're fascinated right now. This is your new hub. You notice all of the SD card slot and the composite video, in fact, all the inputs are gone, um, just in favor of two USB ports. So we will, the hub has two little notched areas that will snap quite neatly into the adapter. And one thing you also get in the kit is this adapter cable for the power. Um, and you just plug the that into the there. Then you plug, there's a tab on one side of this, or a little push tab right there um, that slots right into there. And then just tuck that down the way. Then plug in the USB. And then that should just settle into your slot. So here is our uh, Sync 3 completed, um, fully functional, climate control. So I, uh, we, pl we plug the uh, USB into the phone and it asks me if I want to allow it when it's locked and I'm going to say yes. And then we're going to hit continue. We got the standard privacy in terms of use thing. We could agree. It's asking for 911 assist because calls over CarPlay go over USB, not Bluetooth. We continue. And there's our CarPlay.